everyone! Welcome back to Steins Gate. In the last episode, Mayuri was killed. She was shot by Moika, and we used the Time Leap Machine for the first time in hopes to try to save her. So let's jump into this. Mayuri? 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 No matter how many times I call her name, Mayuri doesn't answer. Mayuri is standing in front of a grave, gazing at the sky. The grave belongs to her grandmother, who died when Mayuri was 11 years old. Her parents were always busy with work, so her grandmother was her only companion. I was close to Mayuri's family, so her death was sad for me, too. At the wake, I expected Mayuri to break down and cry. She didn't. Instead, she spent the whole time gazing vacantly at her grandmother's memorial portrait. Six months went by. I had advanced to middle school, so Mayuri and I no longer commuted together. But whenever I passed the cemetery on my way home, Mayuri would always be standing there. Every day, rain or shine, she would stand for hours before the grave, staring wordlessly at the sky as if she could see her grandmother in heaven. In her hands, an old pocket watch. The watch had belonged to her grandmother. Mayuri had... Mayuri always held it when visiting the grave. Mayuri. Mayuri. No matter how many times I call her name, Mayuri did not answer. Back then, Mayuri wouldn't talk to anyone. Not to me, not even to her parents. Whenever I saw her standing there, staring at the sky, I felt unease grip my heart. Her gaze was so earnest, her intention so pure, that I feared that some power might grant her wish and carry her off to heaven to join her beloved grandmother. And so, to ensure that nothing like that happened, I made sure to stop by the cemetery every day. I would stand next to the sky gazing Mayuri and call her name. Mayuri. Mayuri. But no matter how many times I'd call her, Mayuri wouldn't reply. The only sound in the lonely cemetery was the echo of my voice calling her name. It was raining that day, too. Mayuri had a light blue umbrella. In contrast to the umbrella's color, the sky was glazed gray, covered in clouds. After a while, the rain stopped. Rays of light shone through the gaps in the clouds, a stunningly beautiful sight. Rembrandt's rays, they're called, or something, or sometimes Angel's Ladder. Suddenly, a strong wind swept through the cemetery. It caught Mayuri's umbrella and carried it into the sky. Mayuri seemed not to notice. She kept staring at the sky, and then slowly, very slowly, she'd stretch her hand out to the sky, as if to grasp the rays of light as if her grandmother were reaching down to pull her up, and then she lifted herself on her toes. To me, it looked as if she were floating up towards heaven. Impulsively, I grabbed Mayuri's outstretched hand and pulled her into my embrace. In retrospect, my fears were just childish fantasies, but at the time, I truly believed that Mayuri might vanish. I won't let you go. I won't let anyone take you away. I realized how embarrassing the words coming from my own mouth were. Ma Mayuri wa... Ore no... You're my hostage now. My guinea pig. It was the first excuse that came to mind. Before her grandmother died, Mayuri and I were fans of a popular TV series about costume heroes battling evil. I particularly admired the villain, a mad scientist. I even got pretty good at mimicking his lines. Now I was doing it to hide my embarrassment. I could feel my face growing red, but I kept up the mad scientist act all the same. If nothing else, it was better than admitting my insecurities. <laughs> There's no escaping me. <laughs> <laughs> As I said this, I realized that Mayuri was shaking. Oh. She whispered. It was like the first time in six months that I heard her speak. Her voice was choked with tears. Mayushi's your hostage. 
I guess I'm stuck here, huh? <laughs> she happily smiled. Tears fell from her eyes. And then Mayuri buried her face into my chest. Where am I? Who am I? I can't see. I can barely think. A terrible screech filled my head, like feedback from a giant speaker. <coughs> ah. It penetrates my brain like a hundred sharp needles stabbing me right behind the eyes. I thought brains weren't supposed to feel pain. <laughs> And there's more. I feel a shiver of pleasure beneath the pain, a terrible itching like my body is on fire. I want to crack open my skull and tear out my brain. I want to scrape out my soft gray matter with my fingers and eat it. The assault on my brain is driving me crazy. Who am I? Okabe, what's wrong with you? Ah. Suddenly, the shattered pieces of the world reform. I slowly come back to my senses. I'm in the lab, standing in front of the phone wave named subject to change, with my cell phone to my ear. No, not the phone wave named subject to change since the head gear is attached to it. It's the time leap machine. It's hard to breathe. Give me oxygen. I hear a low, wheezing groan and realize it's coming from my own throat. Ah. Uh, I close my mouth and then take a deep breath. The inside of my throat feels like they're burning. I resist the urge to cough and continue filling my lungs with air. I notice that I'm drenched in sweat. The drops sliding down my forehead are annoying. I try to wipe them away with the back of my right hand. My hand obeys slowly. Something's off. It's like my body and my mind aren't totally in sync with each other. Almost as if this isn't really my body. As if my nerves aren't communicating properly with my extremities. I try blinking slowly. This might just be my imagination. Could this be exhaustion? I haven't slept much lately. I try to move my hand again. There's no disconnect this time. This is my body. Okabe? Okabe? Are you listening? A familiar voice. I turn around slowly. Krisu is there. She stares at me perplexed. What was all that screaming for? What is she talking about? Are you sick? I try answering, but my voice doesn't work too well. Even more bewildering, I clear my throat several times. No, I'm fine. Then get ready to go already. We're going shopping, remember? Shopping? For what? I search my memories. The moment I do, images appear in my mind like a string of exploding light bulbs. Humans are temporal beings. But now you're fine. Are you sure about this? Really? Oh, I remember now. I used the time leap machine. You'll remember the future. That's right. What am I standing around for? Where am I? Huh? Huh? I grab Chris's shoulders and pull her close. What time is it now? What month? What day? Hey, that hurts. Calm down. How can I be calm? Shopping? You said we're going shopping? Which shopping trip is she talking about? 
Dada was sitting at his computer staring at us wide eyed. Dada, what day is it? What time is it? Oh, it's the 13th. A little past 5. The 13th. A little past 5. Did it work? Did I manage a time leap in the middle of all that chaos? Did my memories really jump through time? Does that mean I've leapt into my past self? Is there a chance that this is all a dream? Thinking back forward, it doesn't seem real. Commando's breaking into the lab. It seems like something out of a Hollywood movie. But the sight of Mayori, broken and bloody, is burned into my eyes. I remember the smell of blood, the sound of the gunshot, the weight of the headgear on my head, the pain of the bullet tearing through my arm. Chris is screaming, Suzuha fighting to defend us. I remember it all vividly. I touched my arm. No bullet holes, no pain even. Was it all a dream? I don't know. I've never time leapt before. I can only hope it was a dream. A future like that is too much to bear. I recall Mayori's last moments and my eyes filled with tears. I forced the tide of emotion back. Where's Mayori? I look around the lab. Kurusu and Daru are here, but I can't find Mayuri. Where's Mayuri? Uh, she just left saying she was going to Lukashi's place. Weren't you listening? That's right, Mayuri went to beg Lukako to wear her costume. She won't return until it's time for the party. What do I do? What do I believe? Was it a dream? Or was it real? If it was a dream, then I don't have to worry about anything. It was if it was real, then I need to act. Now. I... Phew. I take a deep breath. It must have been a dream. There's no way something like that could really happen. It was a nightmare brought on by anxiety, that's all. There's no other logical explanation. I desperately persuade myself that that is so. Little do I know that I will soon regret my foolishness. Chris goes shopping alone. I stay in the lab with Daru, waiting for Mayori to return. Doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. I'm back. An innocent smile. Mayori is alive. Nothing will happen to her. I was worried for nothing. When Suzuha arrives, we begin the meeting. Okari, 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 Okari. I called Fetish-chan Luka-chan. They said they couldn't come. I've heard these words before. Deja vu. A trick of the mind? So cool. Oh, do they have plans? Fetish-chan has a ride net tournament. Crap, I should have gone to cheer. How careless of me. And Luka-chan seemed embarrassed for some reason. Maybe she thinks you'll make her wear a costume again. It was just my dream. I've never remembered a dream this vividly before. I remember every word that was spoken. You still haven't convinced her to cosplay. She said it was embarrassing. I kept telling her cuteness is justice, but she never listens. Cuteness is justice? Is that what they say? You're cute too, Christian. Yeah. Hey, coming loves coming up. Wanna go? I can't make something new, but I have a costume of post-awakening Seta from Bloodtoon I made last year. I think the size is just right for you. Me? Cosplay? I'm sort of interested. But I refuse to do it in public, though. You don't have to show anyone, but eventually you'll want them to see. The cosplay demon compels you! That reminds me, Christian. You're always wearing that cute uniform. What school is it from? Oh, this? I attended IMN for about two years. I modeled this outfit after their uniform. Oh, their uniform is really cute, but you made it even cuter. You might have a really good design sense. I'll bring the costume tomorrow, okay? Will you try it on then? Sure. When's the photo shoot? Good to know you're still a perfect Hashida. Come on, Bloodtoon Seta, she's got Panmoto going on. Panmoto? It means her panties are completely exposed. 
No way. It's okay. You might not know this, but last year there was a really popular saying. They're not panties, so it's not embarrassing. Japan is over. Where? Okay. It's a promise. Maybe you shouldn't bother. Suzuha speaks, her tone sharp. She's scowling at Kurisu again. Suddenly the atmosphere in the room changes. I remember this too. I feel like I'm losing my mind here. You're asking for trouble by acting as by trusting Makise Kurisu. What's that supposed to mean? I've been meaning to ask, did I do something to you? Not to me. But I know everything you've done. What do you mean? I've done nothing to be guilty of. Perhaps. But I know your true nature. Wow, you can see into my heart. That's groundbreaking technology. I'd love to hear how it works. It's not science. It's a prediction. So you're making it up. I know. Okari! Mayuri clings to me with teary eyes. Stop them from fighting! Should I listen to Mayuri's plea? Like I did in the dream? Knowing that I can't stop the fight, should I let Mayuri handle it instead? I don't know, I can't move a muscle. Jeez, Mayuri pouts then goes over to the two girls. You guys, Mayushi doesn't like it when you fight. Let's all get along, okay? Daru comes over to chat with Suzuha and gradually peace returns to the lab. Kurisu is in the development room making a call probably to her mother in America. I sit on the sofa and watch TV sipping Dr. P, but I can't pay attention to what's on screen. It doesn't enter my head. Mayuri sits down next to me. She peels a banana and begins to eat it. Hey, Okarin. It's been really lively here the past few weeks, huh? Stop it. Why are you saying the same things as in the terrible dream? It was a dream. It has to be a dream. It's fun. Mayuri smiles happily, not noticing my lack of reply. Um, now that there's eight lab members, Mayushi thinks the lab's getting a little cramped in here. First, we don't have enough chairs. We should buy more. Do you have money, Okarin? I shake my head wordlessly. For some reason, I'm afraid to look Mayuri in the face. I guess you can use some of my salary. We need a new microwave, too. Otherwise, I can't warm up any juicy chicken number one. Okarin, are you okay? You don't look so good. It's nothing. Are you feeling sick? Then you need to rest. Want to lie down? You can lie on my lap, okay? I'm not... Before I can finish, the television interrupts me with an urgent news bulletin. The subtitles read, Terrorist bomb threat suspends Yamamoto Sobu Keihin Tohoku lines. A bomb threat? Hang on, those lines all pass through Akiba. How is Mayushi gonna get home? Oh yeah, I should call home. No, it can't be. It's the same. Every last thing. The same. Okabe Rintaro, I need to know. It was a dream. You've completed the time leap machine, right? It had to be a dream. But if it were a dream, then why? Are you listening? Oh, uh, the time sleep machine's done. Okay. I just remembered I've got something to do. I'm going out. Suzuha leaves the lab without another word. What's wrong with her? Does she know what's about to happen? Nothing's going to happen. Breaking was a dream. But no matter how hard I try to convince myself that, I can't shake the icy hand clutching my heart. I can't breathe. Even though it's not—it's hot and humid, my body shivers. I remember this feeling, too, from the dream. Did I choose wrong? Was I granted a second chance only to let it go to waste? A soft feeling touches my fingers. I look down to see Mayuri holding mine. When I look up, I see worry written on her face. I reflectively look towards the door. If the dream wasn't a dream, then any second now. 
It happens exactly as I remember. Five men burst into the lab. Their movements are swift and sure, professional. Each of them is carrying a gun. They spread just inside the door and aim their weapons at us. I recognize each of them. There's no denying it now. Did I leap through time? It was a future I remembered. I was supposed to change this present to stop the madness about to unfold, but I told myself that it was a dream. I wasted my chance to save Move everyone. Hands in the air. Nobody move. Silence. Time seems to grind to a halt. The men say nothing. Why didn't I do anything to change this? Wasn't that why I leapt through time? The sound of heels echo in the hallway. A woman coming up the stairs. Kuryu Moika. The woman who killed, who killed Mayori. The dream was real. Those were memories of the future. This is happening because I did nothing to stop it. Moika-san? We're taking the time machine. If I kill her first, will Mayori live? I consider the options, but soon give up. The real danger is the men behind her. Three of them have assault rifles. They'll gun us down the instant I try anything. My only hope is for Suzuha to make her move before Mayori is shot. Is there even a chance? Makise Krisu, Okabe Rintaru, Hashira Itaru. The three of you will come with us. You can't resist. Come with us. Where? I have no words. At least tell us where we're going. You cannot refuse. There is nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. I don't want to hurt anyone. The three of you come with us. Why just the three of us? I'm not answering your questions. Come with us. It's your only choice. Moikasa, you're a lab man too, aren't you? In reply, Moika pulls a gun from her belt and points it at us. It's happening again. Our mission is to silence you. Your refusal will come. To come will change nothing. Come with us now. If you continue to resist, I'll have to extort to extreme measures. Moika slowly raises her gun. She points the muzzle at. Shina Mayuri is not needed. I try to shout stop, but the voice catches in my throat. Nothing comes out but a pitiful wheeze. I turn to Kurisu for help. Kurisu is staring at Mayuri. She looks as if she might start crying any second. I turn to Daru. He's shaking. His lips move as if to speak, but nothing comes out. Someone. Anyone. Please. Stop her. Stop, Moika. For Seren. For FB. For Seren. For FB. Her lips close tightly. A sharp, dry crack splits the air. Time slows to a crawl. Moika pulled the trigger. Blood spurts from Mayori's forehead. It splashes across my face, wet and warm. Her delicate, frail body falls towards me. I catch her. Her body is limp, like a puppet with no strings. Her head's and arm, her head and arm dangles lifelessly. The smell of gunpowder fills my nose, and the smell of blood. <coughs> Daru clutches his head and falls to his knees, screaming at the top of his lungs. In my arms, Mayuri takes one long, racket breath. And then... She's dead. Mayuri's dead. Again. Her face is covered in blood. Her blood stains my hand. It's warm. You three come with us now. No more warnings. Resist and we will kill you too. I hear a voice, but I can't comprehend what it's saying. It's the same. I knew it would be. I let Mayuri die again, because I didn't believe my own memories of the future. I lay Mayuri down on the floor. I'm sorry, Mayuri. I'm so sorry. I stand up. Rage takes hold of me once again. I'm helpless to resist. I take one menacing step towards Moika. 
Okabe! Okabe! Kurusu grabs my hand before I can take another. You can't. Let me go. You can't. They'll kill you. Moika's gun aimed at my head. Her finger is already on the trigger. You're gonna kill me too? If you resist. Please, Okabe, do what she says, okay? Otherwise, they'll kill you too. I grit my teeth and suppress my anger. Just then, something small and round strikes Moika's gun hand. She drops her gun. At her feet lies a small stone. Get down! Next events transpire exactly how I remember. Suzuha appears in the doorway, knocking down the first man before anyone can react. She then proceeds to dispatch the remaining men with a series of swift, precise maneuvers. Who the hell? Dark-skinned man, the last one standing, takes aim at Suzuha with his assault rifle. But before he can fire, Suzuha snatches a stunned attacker's gun and shoots him. Blood spurts from the man's hand. Without stopping, Suzuha delivers a soaring roundhouse kick to the man's jaw. Enough. Moika and Suzuha point their guns at each other. A standoff. Neither moves. Silence returns to the room. Who are you? 42. She glances at me. Television. This time I already knew what she meant. Turned on. I make a break for the development room. Don't move. That's my line. Chris is right behind me. I grab the headgear and jam it onto my head without a moment's hesitation. Okabe, I... I'm going back. But what if it fails? Get the machine started. There's no time to argue. I grab Mode Snake from the shelf. Krisu bites her lips and starts setting up the X-6800. Okabe and Itaro, one of them's headed your way. Kill them! Don't let him use it! Before the crew cut man enters the development room, I push the switch. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. Okabe! Are you sure, Okabe? Time leap is Are you sure about this, really? Do it, Chris. Activate the machine. The blue white light shining through the smoke. The discharge is starting. The light rapidly grows brighter. The floor begins to shake. The singularity is open. I crouch down, holding the headset steady in one hand. This is reality. It wasn't a dream. I burn that fact into my mind as I prepare the time leap. One more chance. The shaking begins. Please, give me one more chance. One more. The world explodes into light. I can't hear. It feels like something is crushing my eardrums. Slowly, the shattered pieces of the world reform. My body convulses as if struck by lightning. I am Okabe Rintaro, in the lab development room, standing in front of the time leap machine with my phone to my ear. <coughs> my brain hurts again. This isn't like a headache. It's somehow deeper. With the pain comes a torrent of emotions, sorrow, longing, hope, joy, th that threatens to wash away my psyche. However, only one thing matters. It worked again. I quickly return to the lounge. Yeah. You surprised me. I almost crashed into Kurisu. Don't startle me like that. Daru. Is it just before 5 on the 13th? Uh, yeah. Alright, time leap successful. And on that note, I'm going to leave this episode here. I mean, there's probably like two more lines to really complete this segment, but I don't want to risk it. Woo. We had to watch Mayuri die again. That's horrible. But, I mean, inevitable? I don't know. Uh, anyways, if you're interested to see what happens and how Okabe is going to stop that future from happening, then please subscribe to all that YouTube shit. 
And in the next episode, we're going to see just that. So I'll see you then.